went ahead to become an MP at 32 and served for 50 uninterrupted years as a member of parliament. And it is through that incubation of ascending to a position of leadership early that he was able to refine himself, of course through experience, to become the kind of leader, a towering leader that he became when he assumed the presidency of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, I remember President Mwai Kebake for the free primary education, and I remember when he was campaigning, his competitor then actually told the nation that it was impossible to offer free basic education. But President Mwai Kebake went ahead to prove them wrong when he, of course, gave the people of Kenya an opportunity to go to school without paying. Also, most of us, Mr. Speaker, went to universities and got places in, our, in, in various universities, courtesy of the policies of President Mwai Kebake for opening up space in our private universi uh, public universities, Mr. Speaker, which previously were held on bed capacity and also opened up the economy to be able to absorb uh, capital from private sector for establishment of private institutions. But Mr. Speaker, I also want to remember President Kebake more in regards to the economy. Across all dimensions of the economy, President Mwai Kebake's legacy, Mr. Speaker, is towering. He got an economy that had revenues of around 200 billion Kenya shillings. By the time he left after 10 years, he had uplifted that revenue by 500% to 1 trillion Kenya shillings. The current regime under President Uhuru Kenyatta has only managed to move that revenue from 1 trillion to around 1.6 trillion, which is hardly 60%. Work that Kebake did in, in half a year has taken the current regime an entire 10 years to achieve. President Mwai Kebake got our country and our economy at a point where the total debt was around 600 billion Kenya shillings. Mr. Speaker, he left us with a debt of 1.8 trillion Kenya shillings, borrowing a net of 1.2 trillion Kenya shillings in a span of 10 years. But Mr. Speaker, contrasting with this regime, that debt from 1.8, we have actually surpassed even the limits we have set in this house if you are given the guarantees, now the total debt is going towards 12 trillion. Mr. Speaker, also, economically speaking, President Mwai Kebake left our country when the poverty level was around 39 percent. Mr. Speaker, as we talk now, Kenyans who face multidimensional poverty are just around 63 percent. Two thirds of Kenyans' households, Mr. Speaker, are living in one way or the other in poverty. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, the country that President Kibaki left that was booming has, of course, descended into poverty. Or the other sector, Mr. Speaker, which is more visible, Pre President Mwai Kibaki gave a very good environment for our private sector to thrive. Mr. Speaker, most of the banks and most of the companies in the private sector that we are very proud of as Kenyans, and categorically like Equity Bank, like Family Bank, like many other financial institutions around insurance, Mr. Speaker, they got their operating license during President Kebake's time. All this, Mr. Speaker, he never managed, Mr. Speaker, to ask for any stakes from these companies. And Mr. Speaker, because I see almost my, my time is up, among the many qualities we can learn from President Mwai Kebake is that it is important for leaders not to be conflicted when they are leading. President Mwai Kebake never did business with government when he was president of Kenya. And I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that it is actually criminal for this regime to every time keep on comparing their performance with that of President Mwai Kebake. It is an insult, Mr. Speaker, to his legacy. There is no comparison. We can only contrast. And lastly, the selflessness. President Mwai Kebake never named any street on his name. Actually, when people approached him, to name the Karol Superhighway on his name, he... Member, member, member for